The world of Scythe really came when I was thinking about dystopia and how for the past 10 or 15 years, teen dystopia has been such a huge thing. All of the books that sort of built this whole teen dystopia genre, I, I felt like I wanted to do something different. And so I started to sort of deconstruct dystopian stories. Dystopian stories are always about what happens when the world goes wrong. But what I haven't seen is what happens when the world goes right. What happens when we get all of the things that we want? You know, there's consequences to getting what we want. You know, a world without war, a world without disease, without hunger. These are all things that we do legitimately want, but there will be consequences when we get that world. So what happens when we have a world where people can live forever? We have to deal with that. You know, we've stolen death from nature. We've broken the cycle of life. We're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. And so I thought, well, since the idea is that this is a perfect world, in a world where death no longer comes naturally, uh, how will people still die? And I thought, well, I thought computers could decide, but no, that would be dystopian. The government could decide, no, that would be worse. And then I thought, you know, in the perfect world, the Jedi would decide. You know, the, the Jedi of death, the most honorable, uh, the, the most, in, the most uh, enlightened people would be the ones who make this decision. And so I came up with the idea of these characters that I called Scythes, which are these noble, enlightened people, and their whole job is to thin out the human population. But of course, when you have that much power, you can get corrupted. And so that's sort of where the story begins. In terms of doing research, the research that I did for Scythe was more along the lines of where things are going in terms of artificial intelligence, in terms of medical research. There's always stories about you know, the, the, the scary things that could happen. Rather than going down that path, I just went with what are our hopes and dreams for all of these things? If we have the perfect artificial intelligence, what would that be like? It was sort of just extrapolating from the best possible scenarios and showing the consequences of that. Yes, I did have to do a lot of research on, on death and dying for the sites because they've kind of turned it into a science. And so I had to figure out, well, there's basically four ways. There's blade, ballistics, and bludgeon and then poisoning. So those are the four basic classes of the, that you can kill people. Sort of like re researching how to be an assassin. I guess I might be on some government watch list for this, but uh, I, I certainly hope not because uh, I've never actually gone through with any of these things. It's all mental exercises. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> bringing the Scythe series to a close, or bringing any series to a close, is always bittersweet because you want to wrap up the story, but at the same time, you don't want to say goodbye to the characters. You come to care about those characters. They feel like family to you. And, uh, and for characters that, that I know that are, are going to have to die, that's always difficult. For the characters that, that go on, you know, I always wonder what will their life be like after the end of the story. When it's done, I might go back and tell sort of like the origin story of Scythe Curie uh, or, 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 uh, or Goddard or other characters and just really explore the world in ways that I wasn't able to within the confines of the trilogy.